Yeah. Hair flip. Yeah, I'm a badass bitch. I don't like it. Hair flip. Yeah. Oh my god. So you guys should be happy. Oh my goodness. Hair flip. Anyways, hair flip. And hair flipping on these toes. Hi. Hello everyone and welcome back to your boy Sean Davey Way. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe if you have not already. Make sure you hit the bell if you would like notifications of all of the content that we have coming in the future. In today's video, it marks a new chapter in the series of our survivings and we will be surviving boy bands. The first boy band we're gonna get into is Another Bad Creation. They were a great group from the 90s and a lot of people loved them. Just a big group of kids that got together and decided to do a lot of music, more so of a New Jack Swing type of music at that time in the 90s. New Jack was very popular and these were one of the pioneer groups of it. So we're gonna get right into Another Bad Creation. Another Bad Creation. Sometimes called ABC for short, was an American hip hop and New Jack Swing group from Atlanta, Georgia, who were active in the early 90s. ABC consisted of Romel Roro Chapman, Chris Sellers, David Shelton and brothers, Demetrius and Marlis, Red and Mark respectively is what they were called, Pug as well as Adrian G.A. General Austin Witcher. They were discovered by Michael Bivens. ABC's debut album, Coolin' at the Playground, you know, was released February 11th, 1991. The album's two biggest singles were the first and second singles, Aisha and Playground, respectively, which reached the top 10 on both R&B and pop charts. The latter was also the group's only showing on the dance chart. A cover of New Edition song, Jealous Girl, followed as well as singles, Spider-Man and My World and reached, the album reached number seven on the Billboard Top 200 and eventually went platinum. During this time, Mark and Dave appeared among other children, including Macaulay Culkin in a scene of Michael Jackson's video, Black or White. Also during that time, all of the members of ABC made their own movie appearance to date as characters in Meteor Man, which also featured appearances from various other musicians. They all dyed their hair blonde for the movie, a style they also showcased in the video for the East Coast family's only collective song. March 3rd, 1991, another bad creation appeared on sketch comedy show In Living Color. Keenan Ivory Waynes introduced them by comparing them to the Jackson 5, New Edition, and The Boys. The group then sang Aisha. ABC's second album, It Ain't What You Wear, It's How You Play, was released on September 21st, 1993. Neither the album nor any of the singles charted on any Billboard chart. Since we just ended off on Another Bad Creation second album being called It Ain't What You Wear, It's How You Play, if you didn't know, that was basically a diss. And who that was a diss to was the group Criss Cross. Criss Cross made a song, their biggest song, was actually a diss track to the group Another Bad Creation. That's why Criss Cross wore their clothes backwards and whatnot. They wanted to be everything that Another Bad Creation was not. They were not fans of the group and they also had a problem with them. And at the time, the Criss Cross members were only 12 and 13. So these are a bunch of kids that don't necessarily like each other. It's no different than being on an actual playground. Sometimes kids don't necessarily get along. And in this case, it was Another Bad Creation stating that it's not what you wear, which was about Criss Cross. So let's get into that. Criss Cross changing their clothes and how they wear them backwards and whatnot to make sure that they were separate from the group, Another Bad Creation. Back in 1992, way before the rap game was a TV show, two groups of teen rappers competed for the nation's attention. Chris Mac Daddy Kelly and Chris Daddy Mac Smith were discovered by Jermaine Dupri in Atlanta and formed the group Criss Cross. At just 12 and 13 years old, they became the youngest hip hop group to have gold and platinum albums. The hit single Jump topped the charts for eight weeks. But did you know that this party record is actually a diss track? Right out the gate, you can hear Chris Cross going on the offense in the first verse. Don't try to compare us to another bad little fad. For all of us 80s babies, that was a clear shot at the other young group that had already scored regular radio rotation with their hits Aisha and Playground. 
another bad creation was also known for wearing their clothes inside out as a form of rebellion. So when Criss Cross came out, they wore their clothes backwards and strongly protested against another bad creation, fashion fad. Because inside out is wiggity 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 whack. If you don't know, now you know. So when Criss Cross wore their clothes backwards, that was a protest against another bad creation. Another bad creation wore their clothes inside out, which is different from wearing it backwards. It's literally in the track because inside out is wiggity, 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 whack. So they're saying that them wearing their clothes inside out was whack. That is them dissing another bad creation. They also stated in the track as well, Criss Cross, don't try to compare us to another bad creation. Uh, little fad you know type of situation and they were talking about another bad creation so they were completely against them and the group they didn't like them coming out so the fashion trend back in the 90s when Chris Cross wore their clothes backwards was actually them dissing another bad creation so they were not doing that for you know a new fashion fad or anything like that they were more so making fun of them and in the process of that happening, people actually liked Criss Cross wearing their clothes backwards because there were already kids in the nation wearing their clothes inside out as a form of rebellion due to another bad creation because they were really popular. And they came out before Criss Cross. So when Criss Cross came out, another bad creation was already solidified. That's why they came out dissing them because they didn't like them right out of the gate. They had an issue with them. So a lot of hatred for someone is actually the reason why people liked Criss Cross and they didn't even know it. It was subliminal. They had no idea Criss Cross was dissing another bad creation. Most of their fans just looked at it as, oh, this is a cool song. Jump was uh, a number one hit for eight weeks in a row. And it was actually a diss track. It wasn't just a party song. And that's how people took it as them partying and rebelling, you know, within the song, it had nothing to do with that. It was actually them taking shots at another bad creation. So if you don't know, now you know. Another bad creation, sophomore album, it ain't what you wear, it's how you play it. This is basically a response to Criss Cross. Remember, their albums pretty much came out around the same times. Like Another Bad Creation dropped their first album, which included the hit Aisha and Playground. And then they came out with a second album. But before they came out with that second album, their album had already dropped and Criss Cross came out after. So they were dissing them. So they didn't really have a chance to respond, you know, at that point in time because the beef really didn't start until after their album dropped. So they didn't have any airplay of them combating against Criss Cross. So, of course, when they come out with their second album, which it ain't what you wear, it's how you play it, they were coming for Criss Cross. That was definitely them responding, saying like, well, it ain't what we wear, it's how we play it. Like, we're not popular because of what we wear. We're popular because how we play it, you know, type of situation. Don't hate the player, hate the game, is what they were saying. Like, you guys are clearly jealous of us, and y'all jealous like it's because what we wear and why we're so popular and it's actually us our personality our music that's why people get down with us it has nothing to do with our clothing but Chris Cross felt that their the way they wore their clothes and their fashion fads were the reason why they were so big and why people liked them so much so yeah the second album was definitely a response and once again if you don't know now you know when New Edition's Michael Bivens introduced his new group, Another Bad Creation, ABC, in 1991, everyone was like, look at how those young dudes are rocking the crowds. They had a short stint where they dominated the airwaves and had tween girls everywhere losing their minds over the new airbrushed overall wearing hip hop singing group. These five young Belle Biv DeVos mini-me's had a couple songs that were off the chain. One of them was Aisha. I'll be honest, I even caught myself singing the tune from time to time when I heard it on the radio back in the day. They came back with their hit, Playground, and folks started to get the picture that Michael Bivens wasn't playing around. He was going for it with his Timbaland and starter jacket wearing protégés. ABC went on to sell millions of albums. Plus, folks were dubbing them as the new Jackson 5 of the 90s. But then they fell off as fast as they came up. So what happened? Why did they fall off? I think they fell off due to the MC Hammer syndrome just on a smaller scale. They had a ton of success and a whole lot of exposure, became singing and rapping sensations too soon, and it was just too much, too fast. Another bad creation was made by the group member 
Michael Bivens from the group New Edition and also the group BBD. And he definitely had a good idea and the Jackson 5 and New Edition and groups like that that had minor members, people that were children inside of a group definitely opened up a lane for people like Another Bad Creation, Criss Cross and others so that they could be child stars. Most people in Hollywood, like the directors and the producers and record labels, they really wanted nothing to do with kids because it was a lot of work and it was also a big headache working with children because they're minors. There's a lot of things that they can't do. They're still in school. They can't sign contracts. They can't be overworked. They can only work a certain amount of time throughout the day due to child labor laws and things like that. It's really hard to hire children to perform unless they are extremely talented. And people like Jackson 5 and New Edition, they definitely raise the bar for child stars. And who better to bring out a child group than somebody like Michael Bivens, who was in a child group himself, which was New Edition. So this was perfect. It was a great idea, a great formula. He knew exactly what he was doing. So he just recreated New Edition, but in the 90s. You know, uh, in the 90s, the music had, was completely different. New Jack Swing and everything that was happening at the time, he just had to upgrade it, just kind of make a future type of New Edition and Another Bad Creation did just that. But here's where the problem comes in. Michael Bivens has signed many of acts throughout his career. Another act that he signed was Boys to Men, and there's a few other people that he has worked with. And Michael Bivens is not known to be a good businessman. Now, this isn't any speculation. This is all truth. Uh, Boys to Men had issues with their contracts and with the money that was coming in, and the same thing with Another Bad Creation. The contracts, the money did not add up. This is what made Michael Bivens such a hypocrite because he knew this firsthand. When he was in the group New Edition, especially when they were children, they were constantly robbed by the record labels and by the talent scouts, managers. They were constantly robbed by these people and it was not fair. So that's what makes him a hypocrite because he knows firsthand and how it feels to be a young black man trying to do your best to express your talent and make money off set talent and be robbed in the process to where people are skimming off of your money and not giving you your just due because you don't know any better. So it was the same thing. Michael Bivens took a bunch of acts that didn't necessarily know better. A lot of young black acts and he basically to a certain extent robbed them he did not give them their just due and he learned it from the record industry that he had been a part of for so many years so i think that the group did start off a little young and they may have hit their plateau early if they would have waited and brushed up on their talent and came out a few years later i think that they would have been more successful but by them being so young and them only Having a certain style, that style is only going to last so long because music changes so much. So with the sound that they had by 1994, 1995, the sound was already changing again. So people were overlooking them. And with that being said, their second album came out, their sophomore, and it did not do well at all. They didn't chart at all. They didn't have any top singles. And they also didn't have a successful tour with that as well. So there was really no reason for Michael Bivens to push more money into this group because he had already took as much from them as he could. I mean, they were in movies, they were on sitcoms or on TV shows. They were doing so much so fast. So when you burn out, you burn out, it's that simple. And that's what happened to another bad creation, bad business dealings, and their career started a little prematurely. So. In the music industry, they have a curse called the sophomore album curse or the sophomore curse. And that is when an artist or group comes out with a great body of work with their first project. That brings in a lot of people. They're known instantly. So it's like overnight fame when it comes to the first album. What actually solidifies you as an artist is your second album. So it's better off for your first album to do okay and then your second album just be great because that is when all the money, the deals, the bigger contracts, that's when all that stuff is going to come your way. So as a small example, Michael Jackson, when he first came out with his first album off the wall, it was a great body of work. But when he came out with Thriller, it just didn't compare. It literally set a new tone 
for artists all around the world. Thriller is in the Guinness Book of World Records just for album sales. This is Michael's second album. This was great for him. It would have been, sucked if he would have came out with Thriller first and then did Off the Wall after because it wouldn't have made sense. It, it wouldn't have because they'd be like, well, how do you come out with all of these great things? And then all of a sudden you come out with this because Off the Wall, it was. It was a great album, but it does not compare to Thriller. Thriller was the album of all time type of situation. So that made Michael more so of a threat and very dominant in his field, a force to be reckoned with immediately with that second album. Now people have to come to him differently than they did before. With Another Bad Creation, their sophomore album flopped. So with the sophomore album dropping, they have to drop them. There's no reason to keep you when your first album did amazing and this album didn't do really well at all. Because that means one of two things. That people are not paying attention to you because there's other artists out there in the same field that you are, but they are dominating now and you no longer are. Or people grow up. So as you start to grow up and start to talk about new things, people start to look at you differently. So the new music that they came out with didn't compare to what they were doing before. Everybody liked them very childlike. You know, songs like The Playground and Aisha, they wanted that energy to keep going, but Another Bad Creation did not deliver that. I feel that they were more concerned about being looked at as being a little older and being a little edgier and also calling out people like Criss Cross. I don't think this was the time for them to do that. I feel that Michael Bivens should have kept them focusing on their career and focusing on making great music instead of just their fly by night, here one second, gone the next, very microwavable, you know, type of talent. So while that was happening with the second album, the group started to scramble, everybody, because now they're at a standstill. What do we do now? Where do we go from here? One of the group members, which was Dee Dee Red, ended up leaving the group Another Bad Creation and joined a group called The Incredible Crew. Incredible Crew. Started in 1993, the original group members were Vicky, age 3, Super Mario, age 5, and Nasi B, age 7. With Bounce It's Your Birthday, now a very popular saying by Mini TV and recording artist, written by Cruz and Nasio Brown, Dakari, and Cornell Brown. The Incredible Crew is the youngest group to ever get played on a BET program, which aired on BET with host Sherry Carter back in 1993 on the eighth birthday of Nasi. The record was added and received airplay on Wild in their hometown of Boston and many cities around the country. The then program director, Stephen Hill, who gave the record his blessing, is now a high-ranking executive at BET. Their label, Don't Think Records, was founded by Tom Barella and their father, Cornell Brown, a.k.a. Brown Genie. Several years later, The Incredible Crew recorded the album, Not A Dirty Word, on Don't Think Records with Bobby Hill. Larry the Dr. Reeves and Dee Dee Red, the crew's big brother and former teen star from the group Another Bad Creation. Incredible Crew appeared on a TV show for Noggins, The Inn, a walk in your shoes of then struggling country artist Chris Young. Now country's American Idol Nashville star and RCA recording artist. With the love they have for God and their focus to support the kids along with the Yellow Brick Road organizations, the incredible crew looks forward to doing big things. Yeah, I represent another bad creation. But right now, you know, we're going through a whole bunch of paperwork. So, I mean, I'm just taking care of talent, you know what I'm saying, about to blow up their album. Me and Jeannie doing their album, Hot Side, Cold Side, you know, we just bringing the flavor. Tell me about this Hot Side, Cold Side. Well, I mean, it's really different. Except, instead of A side and B side, it's like a hot side and a cold side. Because when he do his music, it's like, you know, that kind of summer kind of, you know what I'm saying? But when I do mine, and being Little Man Rap is more of a hip hop kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like little man versatile. Tell me some more about you. I also understand that you're an actor. Well, I did, you know what I'm saying, the movie. Hopefully more. Me and Jeannie gonna hook something up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What movie were you in? Well, it was called Medium Man, right here on the hat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shot of that hat. Yeah, Medium Man, that yeah. was a good one. Yeah, exactly. I remember that movie. Yeah, it was fun because it was like star studded. You know, everybody was like, important, you know what I'm saying? It made you feel important, you know what I'm saying? 
what was what uh, what was the most outstanding thing that you remember about that movie? Well, we got to beat up Robert Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah, got to beat him up. You know, <laughs> he was being bossy, so we took it out on the movie and the script. What was he like working with? Oh, well, he's very fun. You know, he know what he wanted to do, and with us playing our part, it was very easy. Oh yeah. Yeah, but right now we just chilling, blowing up, little man. So everybody go out there, buy the album, it'll be out sometime in the beginning of 96. It's called Now the Dirty Word, you know what I'm saying? Little Man featuring the crew, incredible crew. Go get it. Didi Red did leave the group Another Bad Creation, and as you saw, he joined another one called The Incredible Crew. The Incredible Crew actually had momentum behind them at the time, working with BET, among other things. It was a good look for him. It was a very smart decision to remove himself because there was no momentum with Another Bad Creation. They were literally at a standstill, and he enjoyed it. He enjoyed being famous. He enjoyed expressing his talent. He enjoyed those things, so he joined a group where he could showcase his talent. And he was a little older, so it was easier for him to do interviews and talk back and forth versus to doing it with like a six-year-old, you know, because the group members were pretty young. So he could actually articulate himself, so he was a good look for the group, and he already had fame and notoriety to him. So I thought it was a good idea that they added him into the Incredible Crew. But... They did end up finding themselves getting back together, another bad creation, to come forward with another album. And it was about, I don't know, 13 years later. So that's a pretty big jump to your last album being in the 90s and the next time you do an album is 13 years later, which will mark 2006. So let's get into when the men got back together. Fast forward 13 years later, it's 2006, and the guys have regrouped and formed their own independent record label, called Another Bad Creation LLC. After releasing their all rap comeback album, Grady Baby Compilation, in May of 2006, the group soon found themselves reliving 1993 all over again. Do I need to tell you all the dismissal outcome? In case I do, let's just say if there was ever such a thing as a junior jinx, they'd be suffering from it. Grady Baby compilation, which held six tracks with only three members rapping on it, only four members on the album cover, never made its way to any album or single charts. However, at least one good thing emerged from the group's success and demise in 2005. After years were trying to get themselves back on the right track financially, professionally, and emotionally, the guys can now consider themselves record label owners. Wait. That is a good thing, right? Let's break this down a little bit. The last time Another Bad Creation made an album was in 1993. Jump 13 years later to around 2005, 2006, and they come out with another album called Grady Baby Compilation. Here is the issue. Nobody knows who you are, okay? The last time we seen Another Bad Creation, they were children. Now, they're adults, and it's a turnoff. And the reason it is a turnoff is because there's no history in between the 13 years. So it's not like they were like the Jackson 5 or New Edition to where at least the fans got to watch them grow. So by face, you will recognize them immediately. Pretty much in 2006, when they dropped this album with them on the cover, nobody knew who they were. They were thinking like, well, is this a new group calling themselves another bad creation? Or Because these guys are much older. And once again, a lot of their fans were tweens and things in their nature. They were very young when they, you know, had fans and whatnot. And then 13 years later, a lot of their fans are a lot older, you know, adults with children, you know, and stuff like that. So they're not necessarily paying attention to another bad creation, especially when you've had a 13 year gap. It doesn't really make sense for them to even get the group back collectively together at all. I just think that they should try their own independent talents and collaborate when they, you know, feel that they want to, but it doesn't make any sense. We don't recognize you anymore. Where are those cute little adorable kids 
you know, that we all used to love. They've grown up. And with them growing up, there's a 13 year gap of no music, nothing for us to be a fan of. So in 2006, if you didn't know who Another Bad Creation was from the 90s, then you just had no idea or just didn't care to get to know them or listen to this album because there was no publicity, there was no buildup, there, there was none of that. So they could have at least jumped on one of the retro tours. There's a lot of people from the 90s doing tours and things of that nature. I think that that would have helped Another Bad Creation really resurface themselves, but more so of being adults because that's what they are now so them being as old as they are walking around singing playground and stuff like that it just looks and sounds weird especially when there's no collective music after so it's like it's not a big deal if they sing these songs and they have other music in between you know that they can sing as well but just adults getting on stage singing playground and then to do the grady baby compilation album nobody knows that album so it doesn't make sense it's too big of a gap to just try to resurface as, hey, we're back. It just didn't make any sense. But shout out to Another Bad Creation. They are still together, the majority of them. They are coming out with another album, or not necessarily an album, I should say, more so of a where are they now type of DVD of themselves and their journey. And we will definitely give commentary on it whenever it's released. I don't know exactly when it's going to be, but it's supposed to be releasing sometime soon. They've also been on YouTube and interviewed with other YouTubers. So make sure you check out those interviews. But other than that, that is all I have on Another Bad Creation. Shout out to them. It's been a long journey for these men. We wish them well. And until the next video, I love you all. Make sure you check out the Where Are They Nows and the Also Surviving Boy Bands on U42. Make sure you check out U42. 42 underneath Rasb Network and check out Sean Davyway over there because we will be dropping more surviving boy bands this week. Thank you so much. Bye. Fresh, 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 fresh